back to the series of uh, practice problems uh, about DC uh, motors. So in this question, basically we have a DC shunt motor and shunt motor means that the field winding as well as the armature are connected in parallel in shunt and both are connected with the DC supply the V-terminal. So the V-terminal basically is supplying both the armature and the, the field. So this is unlike the separately excited when you have two different voltage supplies. Here we have only one voltage supply that uh, give power to both, both of them. Now, the motor runs at a speed equal to 1200 RPM under no load. So I will write here no load condition, no load. So at no load, we have N, no load, is equal to 1,200 RPM. And under this condition, the armature current IA, again at no load, is equal to 1.25 amps. Now then, there is at rated load or at full load, at full load, the speed drops to in at full load is equal to 1120 RPM. And this is expected that whenever we connect to the shaft a load, this will slow down a little bit the, the motor. But for shunt uh, type of motors, the drop in the speed is not that significant, it's not that big. Okay, so what do we want to find? First, we want to find the input power at no load. So this is the first thing we are interested in. And then the input power at rated load. So at both the full load at no load, we want to find how much power the motor is consuming. Okay, so what is the input power? Vn is equal to what? What is the general formula? Is equal to the terminal voltage times Is. Is basically this is the current Is which supplies the Ia, the armature current and the the field current. So Vt is constant at both cases at the foot no load and at the full load. There's no change in the terminal voltage. So this will be the same. So the question basically is to find Is at no load and at full load conditions. So then Pn at no load is equal to Vt, which is constant, doesn't change, times Is, but at no load condition. What is Is? Is using KCL is equal to If plus Ia, regardless, at any conditions. It doesn't matter what the conditions. So we know Ia at no load. We need to find If. Now, If is constant, does not change. Okay, so now if we want to have a specific case, I is at no load equal to I F, which is constant. It doesn't change because I F is a function of the input voltage. And since the input voltage or the terminal voltage doesn't change, then I F at all loading conditions will be the same. And this is at no, no load. Okay, so what is I F? I F basically is equal to V T divided by R F or R shunt, okay, just Ohm's law, Vt is equal to 1110 divided by 57.5 ohms, and this will give me a current equal to 1.913 amps. So this is the, the field current, so from this, your Is at no load is equal to the 1.913 plus, Armature current at no load 1.25, and this gives me a total current equal to 3.163 amps. So this is the total supply current. From this, we can find P in at no load, which is equal to the V terminal, which is constant, 110 volt, times I is at no load, which we just found it at 3.1. 63 and this is equal to 0.3479 kilowatt. Okay, so we found the input power at no load conditions. Now we need to find the input power 
at full load conditions. As we just mentioned, the whole problem is to find IS. So we need to find IS. So what is IS, but at full load, is equal to IF, which we already know it, plus IA at full load. So the question now becomes how to find IA at full load. But what is IA? If we apply KBL here, your IA, generally speaking, is equal to your terminal voltage minus the back EMF divided by RA. VT is constant, R is constant, so EB will be changing from no load to full load conditions. So now, to find IA at no load, I need to find EB at, uh, sorry, at full load, I need to find EB at full load. How to find EB at full load? Okay, let's go back to the basic relation of EB with the input values. So your EB, the back EMF, is proportional to IF, the field current, times the speed. But IF is constant at no load, at full load conditions. So you can say that your EB is proportional only to the speed. And from this, you can say that your EB at no load divided by your EB at full load will equal to your the speed at no load divided by the speed at full load. Now we know that the speed at no load and at full load, these are given to us in the question. Now I wanna find EB at full load to find IA at full load. So now the question is, what is your EB at no load? So as you can see here, we divide the problem to small parts, one by one, until we reach to what we can find, and then we can go back. So I want to find EB at no load, which is basically the terminal voltage minus IA at no load times RA. And we have everything here. This is 110 minus the current at no load 1.25 times the resistance 0.25 and from this we can find eb at no load equal to 109.7 volt so let's come back to this relationship so we have 109.7 divided by eb at full load equal to n at no load 1200 divided by the speed at full load uh, which is equal to 1120 so we know everything from this we can find the back emf at full load and this is equal to 102.4 volt now we know eb at full load i can find ia at full load which is equal to V terminal, which is 1110 minus EB at uh, full load, which is 102.4 divided by the armature resistance, which is, doesn't change at 0.225. And from this, you will find that the current is equal to 30.4 amps. So let's pause here a little bit. So the current was 1.25 at no load conditions. It jumps from 1.25 to 30.5 amps. So the, the armature current at the beginning, this is the current needed to turn, to spin the armature with no load attached to the, to the shaft. So you need this power just to overcome the rotational losses. Okay, but now, once you start to have a load, you will have a much, much larger current. So from this now, I can find IS at full load, which is equal to the 30.4 plus the constant field current, which we found it before, doesn't change, 1.913. And this will give, me, give us a total IS equal to 32.4. 31. So now we know IS, I can find my P input at full load, which is equal to the V terminal, which doesn't change, 110 times this current 32.31, 32 
and this gives me 3.55 kilowatt. So this is how much power is consumed by the motor at the full load or the rated load conditions. And this is how much power, 0.3479 only, uh, when the motor was running at no load. 